Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi, I'm Marla. I make videos every week of the things that I make that you can make too. So this week we are practicing knitting. I'm gonna show you how to make these cute, colorful little dish cloths. Um, they're made of cotton yarn. They're eco-friendly, that they, you can just wash them in the, in the uh, washing machine. Uh, and they're very useful, but really the purpose of this is just to give you the opportunity to practice knitting. If you've knit in the past and just haven't done it in a long time, or you've never knit, this will be a great project to actually get you started and to just practice. All it takes is a little bit of yarn and a set of needles and you're good to go. Also, this video is uh, gonna be two parts. So we're gonna do knitting projects this week. But then I thought, you know, there's a lot of people who would prefer to crochet. Some feel crochet is easier than knitting. Uh, it depends on if you're a knitter or a crocheter. Everybody's got opinions about that. But I thought it would be useful to do a similar project and actually do some in crochet next week. So whether you prefer knitting or you prefer crochet, I've got you covered. We're going to do both. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's start with some basics about knitting. Knitting is really very easy. It's a combination of two types of stitches, the knit stitch and the purl stitch. This, I just brought out a scarf that I'm working on to show you what the knit stitch looks like when on the front of your fabric, you do the knit stitch. And when you go to do the back row or the reverse, you do the purl stitch. So the purl stitch produces these little bumps here. But when you do only the knit stitch, which is what we're going to do today, you get what is called the garter stitch. So this is where you do the knit stitch down one row and when you turn it over, you do the knit stitch again. In essence, what you're doing is you're seeing all pearl bumps. But if you look closer, you can see the V's inside underneath. So what you're doing is you're actually doing all knit stitches, which is what we're gonna do, and it produces this garter stitch. The other pattern that is on the scarf there is called the stockinette stitch, but we're just gonna do, be doing knit stitches today. The garter stitch is great for a project like this, a dishcloth, because it gives you this texture, which is great for scrubbing dishes. I'm gonna be using a basic cotton yarn for my projects today. These were ones I had in my stash. I have a couple different versions here. You can buy these at most craft stores for, you know, probably three or four dollars. On the packaging, it says it's 100% cotton, which will be great for, um, you know, lots of washes. And it also tells you a recommendation for the size of needle to use. Um, with this type of yarn. It also uh, is a good idea if you're making something that needs to be a specific size, it's a good idea to um, make a practice swatch and see if that size needle is right based on your knitting style. I'm actually gonna use the size 10, even though the packaging uh, recommended a seven, because I want you to be able to see the work a little better um, here on video. And also then uh, the project will end up a little looser, which I think will be good for a dishcloth. The first thing we need to do to get started is to get our yarn on our needle. This is called cast on. There's several different ways to do this, but the process I'm gonna use is called the long tail cast on. So the first step is to figure out how long that tail needs to be. I leave about six inches, and then I start wrapping the yarn around my needle 20 times in this case, because our project is going to have 20 stitches. Um, this is a, a process I started using a few years ago because it was so frustrating when I would leave a tail start casting on and it wouldn't be long enough and I'd have to start all over again. And so th what this does is it allows you to come close to the right amount of yarn that you need for your cast on. So I'm wrapping the yarn on the needle 20 times 
and then I just take it off. That's what determines the length I need for my tail. So now I'm going to pull it off of my needle and that's my long tail. So the next step is going to be um, casting on those stitches. To get the first stitch on, we're going to start with a slip knot. So you've probably made a slip knot in other projects you've done um, with working with yarn, but what you do is you cross the yarn over itself and then with the working yarn, when you hear the term working yarn, it's actually referring to the side of the yarn that is attached to the ball, not the long tail. You push that through the loop and that creates your slip knot. So this is this actually becomes the first stitch on our um, on our cast on. So now that we have our first stitch on our needle, we're going to give ourselves some yarn. And the what what I do, if you see here, I actually put it in between my two outer fingers and my inner fingers just to hold on to it. I hold both pieces of yarn at the bottom with my two fingers at the bottom. And then what you want to do is create a V with your thumb and finger. What I do is I wrap around my thumb, down my finger, you twist your hand and pull the yarn tight. So I'm gonna go through this a couple times so you can see it here. But what you're doing is you're going on the outside of both of those pieces of yarn on um, the V. So I'm going all the way to the left. I'm exaggerating up my thumb. Once you get going, you won't have to do that. But I twist my hand again, draw down my finger, and then you put the needle through that hole and then pull tight. Let's try again. Make sure again you're holding it tight on the bottom, over your thumb, over your finger, and through. You always want to adjust your um, stitches just to make sure the tension is the same each time. You don't want your um, cast on stitches to be too tight. You want to do this as loosely as you can. Otherwise, the edge of your project will be tighter than your knitting and you don't want that. But as you can see, once you get going, you just straighten it each time and you can start going much faster. Um, just get into a flow of it. You don't have to hold your hands so stiff as you're going. But you do that until you have all 20 stitches on your needle. If you need to pause the video and back up to watch it again, feel free to do that. And also practice catching, casting on a few times just to make sure that you get your um, each one of your stitches even. There are two ways to do the knit stitch, the English method and the continental method. With the English method, you hold the working yarn in your right hand and the continental method, you hold the working yarn in your left hand. So I'm going to show you both those ways, but before we do, let's talk about how you get tension on the yarn, regardless of what hand it's in. I'm showing you here how I do it. I wrap it around my pinky and then I have my index finger actually controlling the tension. So I also wrap it around the index finger and then I hold the needle. For each row, you're going to move the stitches from the left needle over to the right needle by doing knit stitches. To do the knit stitch, you stick the right needle underneath the left from front to back. You wrap the yarn around the back of the needle and between the two needles, and then you push the needle through the hole and remove the stitch, moving it from the left needle to the right. You can see here that I'm using my fingers to hold the, the yarn in place or to scoot it down on the needle. When I let go of the needle on the right, I'm actually using my fingers on the left to hold the needle in place while I move that yarn over around those needles. Um, it takes some practice here to 
get the rhythm going. I've slowed it down here a little so you can kind of see the stitch. But once you get going, what you really want to do is just practice a rhythm so you get it going. Because that rhythm and that consistency is going to create even tension among your stitches. Now you're just going to continue working these knit stitches all the way down the row until you've moved all 20 stitches from the left needle over to the right needle. When you get to that last stitch, you may feel like it's um, the tension isn't as tight. Just be careful to um, not make that stitch any looser than the others. Now we're going to turn our work and go back the other direction for the next row. You're just going to do the exact same thing you did on the last row. Create the tension in your hand, start your stitches the same as you did. It's always good as um, you saw a second ago just to straighten out your stitches and um, be checking to make sure that you're keeping your tension the same as you go down the row. Once you get all 20 done, we're done with that second row. So that was the English version holding the yarn in your right hand. Now I'm gonna show you the continental version where you hold the yarn in your left hand. So we're gonna do the same type of uh, tension on the yarn, but you'll see I'm holding it in my left hand against my, um, the work, my work. And now I'm moving the, the stitches over into the right needle just like we did before. But the difference is the yarn is coming from the left hand. So we're still going front to back. We're still wrapping around that needle. But you notice I don't do that big loop like I do on, with my right hand in the English version. I'm just moving my finger slightly over that needle. I use my right hand index finger to hold the yarn in place and then I move the stitch off the needle. So I think you can see the movement is much tighter in this continental version um, than it is in the English version. I don't have that big swing of my hand, which some people call flicking of the yarn over the needle like I do in the English version. Um, I find this method to be so much easier. Uh, this is how I knit is the continental version. I do have to say maybe I do it this way because I'm left-handed and maybe that's what makes it easier for me. I'm not sure, but I do think you can see that the movement is very different and um, much tighter in this continental version than it is in the English version. So I just knit much faster this way than I did before. When I was talking about the tension in that last stitch in the English version, also you see when in the continental version, when I uh, pull the tension to the left, it actually tightens that last stitch. So I find I also don't have that trouble of that loose stitch on the end like I do when I do the English version. So um, this is my preferred method, and I hope you give it a try as well. I think the best idea is just to try it both ways and see what works best for you. Um, the other method, the English method, might be the better way for you. Um, again, that was the purpose of this project, is just to give you an opportunity to learn something new and to practice and try something. It is just a dishcloth, so it doesn't matter how it turns out. It doesn't have to be perfect. Um, it's really just about um, trying some different ways of knitting and just getting comfortable with the movement of the stitches. Another thing that I think is really important is the to get into the rhythm. You can see here, that's what I'm trying to do is just keep my rhythm going because once you do that, that also is creating even uh, tension among your stitches. It's always good when you're gonna put your work down, down um, that you do that at the end of a row and not in the middle of a row so that what you're starting over, you're gonna start at a new row. 
So now we have four or five rows done and we're gonna do some measuring. We want to know how wide it is because I want this one to be square, basically square. It doesn't have to be exact, but it's about five inches wide, so we want it five inches tall. So at this point, keep, continue your knitting, pause the video, continue your knitting until you get your project um, five inches long. Now that our project is five inches square, what we want to do is cast off the stitches off of our needle. So to do that, each time we add two stitches onto our right needle, we're going to remove one. So that's our first knit stitch. Now we're going to knit a second stitch onto the right needle. And now we're going to move the stitch in the back over the stitch in the right and then have it fall off of the needle so that in the end we only have one stitch on the right needle and we're going to continue to do that across with all of the stitches so again we knit a stitch so two stitches on the right needle we cross over that back stitch over the front stitch until it falls off of the needle and as we do that we're eliminating stitches so we just continue to do that down the entire project until we've removed all of the stitches. To remove that last stitch, we're just going to clip our um, yarn. So we just have a little bit of a tail and then we're going to um, just tie a knot with that yarn through that loop. So we're gonna make our loop a little bigger, tuck the tail into it, and then pull, and it's gonna create a knot there on the end. To secure that end, I just attached a yarn needle, and now I'm just gonna weave it in to my project. It won't show, um, It's you're just gonna weave it in between the stitches and then pull it through and cut off the end, and that will secure that yarn in place. You also do that on the beginning of um, the project where we left our tail originally, so you'll do it on that corner as well. And now this project is done. And here's a tip for determining whether you have enough yarn left for a future project. In this case, I'm using a food scale to weigh a project I've already done. Um, so with this dishcloth, it weighs 22 grams. And then you just weigh the yarn that you're going to use, the rest of the ball of yarn you have, to see if you have enough. In this case, I have enough of this pink yarn to make two more of the um, dishcloths the size of that blue one. So here I just wanted to cover a couple more thoughts about um, this project and knitting. This I'm just working on a a second dishcloth here, one that um, I love this yarn, it's it's pretty color. You can see that this variegated yarn actually creates the look of stripes, which is nice because you don't actually have to change the color of the yarn, you just keep knitting and it automatically produces these stripes. So something to think about when you're looking for yarn. But I also just wanted to recommend that when you start um, working your project, there's a couple things to think about. One, be sure that you're sitting in a comfortable chair, um, that you're not hunched over or really um, stressing your muscles as you're doing this because it can create some aches and pains if you're doing this for several hours at a time. It's really good as you're going along to remind yourself occasionally whether your um, you know your neck is hurting or whether you're you're stressed or tense 
Um, even the tension in your hands, if your hands are cramping, it means you're holding the needles too tightly. It's really good to um, notice that, step back a little bit, relax, take a deep breath, slow down, and enjoy the process because you don't want it to be um, stressful and uncomfortable. You want it to be something enjoyable. So uh, just always be thinking about that as you're going along. Make sure you're sitting in a comfortable position. Put on a great, um, you know, Netflix movie and enjoy the process. You can complete one of these in within an hour or two. Even someone who's very new at this can do this very quickly. And then you have this nice uh, dishcloth in the end. But the most important thing to remember is it doesn't have to be perfect. It's just a project. Embrace the imperfections and enjoy the process. As you can see, I've made quite a few here and I'm going to um, next week show how to make these crochet ones. So that'll be a video for next week. Hope to see you then. Thanks for watching everybody. Bye-bye.